Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to the next lesson in Vertical Projectile Motion. In the last lesson, you were taught how to understand graphs and how to read them. And I'm hoping that you, between the last lesson and this lesson, went home and tried to practice some of what you've learned. Because in this lesson, you're going to be learning how to do calculations with graphs in the section which is called Vertical Projectile Motion. <laughs> Hello Grade 12s, in this lesson we will look at some questions related to two graphs of motion. These graphs are simplified to make things easier for us to see patterns. For example, the acceleration due to gravity is taken as 10 rather than 9,8 meters per second squared. This is a position time graph and this is a velocity time graph. They are for the same motion. Now first, Describe what these graphs represent. These graphs could represent the motion of a bouncing ball. The graphs show the ball bouncing three times. Each time it bounces, it reaches a lower maximum height because the ball loses some of its mechanical energy. This energy moves to the environment in the forms of heat and sound energy. Let's start at the beginning of each graph and describe the motion bit by bit. The ball leaves the ground at the velocity of 10 meters per second upward. It moves upward at a decreasing velocity. The ball reaches zero velocity and maximum height, which is approximately 5 meters after one second. The ball then moves downward. Its velocity increases as time passes to a maximum velocity of 10 meters per second downward after another second. The ball hits the ground. The ground applies an upward force on the ball, accelerating it upward for the time the ball touches the ground. This causes the ball to leave the ground at a velocity of a little less than 10 meters per second upward for the start of the next bounce. There. Now it should be easy to answer the next true or false questions. True or false. The object is at its highest point at A. The object is at its highest point at B. The object is traveling just as fast at A as at C. The gradient of line AB is the same as the gradient of line BC. The object is in free fall from C to D. The object is accelerating upward from C to D. Let's discuss the answers. Is the object at its highest point at A? No. It's on the ground at A. The point is high up on the VT graph because the ball is moving quickly upward at this point. Is the object at its highest point at B? Yes. Its velocity is zero here. A projectile has zero velocity at its highest point. Is the object traveling just as fast at A as at C? Yes. The magnitudes of these two velocities are equal. They are both approximately 10 meters per second. The velocities have different directions though. The ball has a velocity of positive 10 meters per second at A. In other words, 10 meters per second upward. It has a velocity of negative 10 meters per second at C. In other words, 10 meters per second downward. Is the gradient of line AB the same as the gradient of line BC on the velocity time graph? Yes. They are equally steep and slope in the same direction, negative slope. This is because the ball is in free fall for AB and BC. So the ball is accelerating at negative 10 meters per second squared for both intervals. Is the object in free fall from C to D? No. From C to D, the ball touches the ground, which exerts an upward force on the ball. This force accelerates the ball upward so it's not in free fall. Is the object accelerating upward from C to D? Yes. The positive gradient shows this. The graph slopes upward to the right from C to D. Now for some calculations related to the velocity time graph. First, we are asked about interval A to B. We have to find the object's displacement and acceleration. The area under a VT graph gives the object's displacement during that time period. Notice that the base of this triangle is one second 
and the height is 10 meters per second. Substituting these values into the equation gives us an answer of 5 meters. This is a positive answer, which means the ball moves 5 meters upwards in this interval. We expected this answer. Look at the same interval in the position time graph. The ball moves from the ground up to 5 meters above the ground. In other words, its displacement from A to B is 5 meters upward. The next question asks us to calculate the ball's acceleration between A and B. The gradient of a VT graph gives the acceleration of the object. Notice that the Y interval of this part of the graph is minus 10 meters per second and the X interval is 1 second. We substitute these values into the equation and find an answer of negative 10 meters per second squared. This is an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared downward. We expected this too, since the ball is in free fall during this interval. Remember that in these questions, the acceleration due to gravity has been simplified to 10, rather than 9.8 meters per second squared downward. The next questions are about interval BC. Again, we have to find the object's displacement and acceleration. The area under a VT graph gives the object's displacement during that time period. Notice that the base of this triangle is 1 second and the height is minus 10 meters per second. We substituted these values into the equation and get an answer of negative 5 meters. The ball moves 5 meters downward in this interval. Again, we expected this answer. Let's look at the position time graph. The ball moves from 5 meters above the ground down to the ground during this interval. In other words, its displacement is 5 meters downward. Now we must calculate the ball's acceleration between B and C. We calculate the gradient of line BC for the velocity time graph. The Y interval is minus 10 meters per second and the X interval is 1 second. We substitute these values into the equation and find the expected answer of negative 10 meters per second squared. In other words, downward. Our last question. Now for the combined interval A to C. Again, we are asked to calculate the object's displacement, and this time we are asked to draw an acceleration time graph for the motion. To find the displacement from A to C, we add the areas of the two triangles shown. The answer is obviously zero. Displacement refers to the difference between the start and the end positions. This answer of zero meters tells us the ball ended where it started. This is clear from the position time graph. The ball was on the ground at both points A and C. Finally, we draw an acceleration time graph for this interval. We have already seen that the gradient of line A to C is constant at negative 10 meters per second squared. The interval A to C lasts 2 seconds. So we plot an acceleration of negative 10 meters per second squared for 2 seconds. And that brings us to the end of our questions. I hope that the series on projectile motion in one dimension has been useful. Visit the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn for other topics. Goodbye.